Kia ora tato, me unui tato. Tui a te rangi e tui iho nei, tui a te papa e tā koto ake nei, tui a te maunga e tā farau nei, tui a ngā awa e rere atu nei, tui a te moana tapu o tikapa e whakamāri e nei, e rongo te pō, e rongo te ao, kia tūturu o whiti whakamaua, kia tīna, tīna, aumi e hui e tāi ki e. A i te tīmatanga i noho ko te ngao koe o i ngā rangi tū hā-hā. Nā i o ā rangi nui me papatua nuku, nā raua a kaputa mai. Ngā atua e te aki ana tō tātou ao tūroa, nā reira e ngā kāwai tūpuna tāne māhuta, tangaroa mā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou. Ka huri aku whakāro ki te kīngi Māori atu hei tia pōtatau te whero-whero te tua whitu. Me ona whare katoa, rire, rire, hau, pai mā rire ki a rātou. He mihi aroha, he mihi mahara ki a rātou, kua wehe atu ki te pō. Koutou e kā puni puni ana i raro i te maru o pōhutu kaua, tētahi whetu o matariki e arataki ana rātou ki tua o te arai. Nō reira ki a rātou, moi mai, moi mai, whakahoki atu. Āpiti hōno tātai hono rātou kua wei atu ki te pō, āpiti hōno tātai hono tātou e tū ana ki te ao. Tēnā koutou kua tai mai nei tēnei rā ki te awhi ki te tautoko o te kaupapa whakahirahira me ki hei tia ki tō tātou moana. Nō reira, ngā mihi nui ki a koutou katoa. Just a quick greeting to everyone. And before I start, I just want to say that these sessions will be recorded and the recording has already started. So if anybody has a problem with that, too bad. <laughs> um, I'll just quickly go around and introduce who we have in the room. Firstly, myself, my name is Fred Wilson and I'll be one of the co-facilitators today. Next to me is Miranda O'Connell, who we all know. <laughs> Um, and she is also um, the other co-facilitator for our sessions this afternoon. We also have Mark Russell in the room, who um, is our tech god this <laughs> afternoon. Um, also is Karis, who is the, um, the co-coordinator here <laughs> with the lovely face paint. Um, we also have the lovely Christine Rahiri, who will he be here <laughs> who will be here to make sure that our timing is Spot has on. military precision. Share screen. So just quickly again, this session will be recorded and Obviously, we have our instructions here for both presenters and watchers. So, Q and A's, um, they're going to be run slightly differently. There won't be time for any verbal um, Q and A's this afternoon, but there is a function for you to type in your questions. Please identify who you are asking at the beginning of your question, and then we can reply to those as we go through the afternoon. Oh, kia ora koutou, tēnā koe Fred, thank you very much, and um, kia ora koutou katoa, to, uh, thank you to all the presenters and to all those watching, and uh, kia ora koutou all of those who are going to be watching the recordings later on. Um, we've received lots and lots of uh, feedback that people are very excited um, by this showcase, um, and, but of course, busy Sundays, in fact, it's crazy busy here at Waiheke, isn't it, Fred? So busy. Man, how would you describe what we saw down at the ferry? Too many people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and this is part of the thing, right? The Waiheke way, how do you have that manaki tanga and welcome people, but also really take care of the marine environment? So this is um, exciting uh, to welcome everybody to the showcase webinar today. Uh, first up, I want to do some thanks uh, to the sponsors that have enabled the Waiheke Marine Project to come this far. And you'll see there's a real diversity of sponsors. Big shout out to that. And of course, hope they keep going and more too. Um, and then you'll notice down there on the um, right hand side of the screen, the endorsement from the Hauraki Golf Forum. So on the 24th of May, the Hauraki Golf Forum endorsed the Waiheke Marine Project and its nine commitments. 
and Dean Ogilvy in one of our later slots this afternoon will be talking more to that. So a tiny recap before we get into all the amazing presentations. So less than seven months ago, what are you? Feels what? like only yesterday, Miranda. Yep, we were all here on Waiheke. There were 76, of, look at that beautiful photo. I hope you can see and remember. And um, to some people have passed since then. So uh, lots of um, aroha uh, to the energy that went into that time. And that's continuing for us today. Um, so there was a diversity of people at that um, event and you'll see the, the, the list down the side. And so people brought all their different ideas, but what they also had in common was their deep urge to protect and regenerate the marine environment. And the way people worked with each other seven months ago at the Future Search was embodying these values. And we continue to embody these today. So tiertidity partnership, it's crucial, right? I mean, we're here today um, and we, will we have been and will continue to doing this journey, the learning what it is to be tangata whenua, what it is to be tangata tiriti. Right? It's a big learning for all of us. And I hope and know that we can do a whole lot better than we've done in the past. The whole system focus, that it, um, we tend to narrow down on one or two things, but it's the whole system. It's the interrelationships, the functionality. Uh, that common ground in future, of course we all disagree on stuff, but there's a lot we do agree on. And the more energy we can put into the common ground, we're going to get further faster. Self-management, each of us as individuals, we've got to look after ourselves, eh, Fred? That's right, Miranda. <laughs> See? See how nice he's been? He's showing. We're modelling kindness and respect. And when we look after ourselves as individuals, that makes it so much more effective when you come together as a collective, and which leads into that next principle of collaborative practice. Um, it's the only way forward. There's no way that any of us as individuals is going to be able to protect and regenerate the marine environment. We've got to work together, and we've got to use all knowledge. That means mātauranga Māori, citizen science, and the other science. People just tend to call it science. I don't know, I reckon we need a new word. What would we call that other science? The one that you go to university for? Flash science. Flash science. Well, I don't know, I think mātauranga is pretty flash, and citizen <laughs> science is pretty flash. But you get that we need all knowledges to be brought to bear. So at the Future Search, all those amazing people with different ideas, and boy, people disagree with each other, didn't they? They sure did, Miranda. <laughs> I'm liking this. He's just agreeing with everything I'm saying. <laughs> um, we uh, un unanimously agreed to these nine areas of common ground. So real, real brief. So te tiriti, it's pretty um, self-explanatory what that's about. The modi um, is this regeneration. How can we as humans really contribute to things getting better and replenishing the modi? Which is, you want to give a go? What you mean by the Modi? Putting him on the spot. What do you reckon? <laughs> well, I think the Modi is just the life force of our moana. And everything that's in it and everything that's on it and everything that is surrounded by it as well. Absolutely. Thanks, Fred. I won't do this too much to you, I promise. And there's I just five not. minutes for us at the beginning in case you're thinking, why are they going on? Then we had the learning. And that's that whole concept that we are learning. It is a journey. I mean, if we knew what to do, we wouldn't be in such a mess, right? So it's that learning and, and listening to the moana, listening to rangatahi, and really, and for us as, as adults, as Pākeke, taking it on and learning together. Integrated management is from the hilltop to the sea, that we need that holistic kiuta kitai to be really taken into uh, account. Protection tools. Like, there's a few tools out there. Let's use them. And we might need to get some new tools. But in the meantime, because boy, it can take a long time to go through legislation, let's use the ones we've got, whether that's Rahui, whether that's MPAs, Marine Protected Areas, let's use the tools that are there. Moving into effective legislation, um, to act as advocates. All of us can advocate to uh, the government, the various parts of government, and kia ora to all of those um, who work for government who are on this webinar now, um, to make the legislation as effective as possible. Clean water, that we're real careful what we put in the water. And um, clean water is another sign of Modi, right? Uh, the Waiheke Way. Again, anybody who's spent any time on Waiheke, and a lot of you are on the webinar now, know that there is a certain way that Waihekeans like to roll. And that is to be embraced in this movement of uh, Kiuta Kitai. And then circular economy. Super important that uh, viable and resilient businesses uh, are part of this space. 
So without further ado, we're going to be about to move into our amazing presentations. So the way this webinar has been set up, um, there are 19 presentations in total. And uh, that's a lot to go through and that you couldn't sit in one session and look at that. So we've split it up into three. So we've got three slots, we've got six, a break of half an hour, then another six, break of half an hour and another six. And for all those smarties who've worked out that three sixes equals 18, you're right, because we did just get a text that unfortunately someone's caught um, with car trouble. So we are to 18 today. Fred and I will introduce each speaker very briefly, which gives you presenters tiny little time to get yourself ready and get your sheen, uh, screen share going. So I will now hand to Fred to introduce our first speaker. Cool. So just quickly, I'd like to welcome Adam Watton, who is going to be talking about the CODA survey and introducing CODA back into um, the Waiheke waters. So kia ora, Adam. Kia ora, Fred, and kia ora koto katoa to everyone else. Thank you for the introduction there. Um, for those that I haven't met before, my name's Adam Watton, and I'm the owner here at Waiheke Dive and Snorkel, surprisingly on beautiful Waiheke Island. Um, enjoying the weather today. It's much nicer than it's supposed to be. So um, yeah, be nice to have a little chat with you all. I'm just going to pop onto my screen share real quick. Okay, give me two moments. Awesome stuff. All right, hopefully everybody can see my slides and we'll just chat through those. So as some of you may be aware, uh, in the last four weeks or so, there's actually been a diver survey of the quarter of the crayfish around the coastline uh, of the island. Um, to, to kind of establish a bit of a baseline, to work out how many we have in the area, to work out uh, what the movements are, what the locations are, those kind of bits and pieces. And so why would we do that? Well, there's a few simple reasons. First of all, as we know that the current Rahari on the island creates this very, very special and unique opportunity to help the crayfish populations begin their recovery. As most of you on the call are probably aware that the crayfish are in a situation now where their numbers are so low that they simply can't meet their ecological role um, as a key player and a key predator within that system. And it's one of the influencing reasons why we're seeing things like Kenobarans around the island and through the wider to Moana and the Gulf itself, we're seeing them pretty much across the entire area. Also, you know, with, with such low numbers of, of quarter of crayfish, we're, we're not able to, to meet any harvest needs, you know, so if people do want to harvest, then there's, there's simply not enough there to do so. Um, how many do we have? Well, that's a really interesting question. So there's no recent data on any of the sites or any of the abundance of crayfish around the reefs of the area, particularly within that Rahui area. So having some kind of baseline information, knowing what's there is really, really, really important. Um, helps make sure that, you know, we can, we can track the progress, we can track the recovery, uh, and we can make sure that, that we know what population is doing. Um, why do it with the diver survey? Well, it's a great way of doing things. So we've seen throughout various different surveys and all kinds of different species that actually having people in the water, eyes on, is a great way to survey things. You know, you can, you can take averages, you can do these kind of bits and pieces, but actually, as we all know, there's no real substitute for going and having a look. It's a great way for us to estimate abundance density across multiple different species and multiple different areas as well. In terms of those densities, not sure if anyone's aware. So uh, a study from around 1995, um, predicted that there would be around 38 crayfish per 500 square meters of a protected reef area, i.e. Rahui or, or other marine protection areas here within the Gulf. Um, current best estimates today is we'd be looking at one per 500 square meters. That's a massive, massive decline in 25, 26 years. Um, other things that was really key for us is timing. So again, you may or may not be aware that this time of year, end of May, June, is when you have your mating pairs come together to do their thing and to, re and to, and to breed and repopulate. So we were seeing that, hey, this is the best time to have a look and see what's around. And crucially, one of the beautiful things with the diver surveys by having us in the water is we can make sure we survey in a way that respects the Rahui. So the whole process was designed purely to be visual. There was no disturbance to any of the quarter, no uh, interactions, no touching, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was purely a case of have we seen, what have we not seen? So how do we do it? Really simple. So what you fundamentally do is you get body pairs of divers in the water and they have a 50 meter long uh, kind of industrial spec tape measure. We put one end near the boat, we measure out 50 meters, 
then divers survey a five meter wide channel on one side of it, all the way back to the start point. Then the five meter channel on the other side, all the way up again, means they cover that 500 square meters. So you would expect to be seeing that one, one quarter, one crayfish at the moment based upon those current uh, expectations. So the survey area we covered was within the Rahoe space. And as you can see from the slides, we split it into five distinct areas. Now, these five areas were chosen based upon historical information um, and also areas that should have the most hospitable habitats for, for the quarter, for the crayfish. Um, and we split those up into different bits and pieces. Now, at this point, I think it's really important that I mention the volumes we had. Uh, the whole process came together very, very quickly, and 89 volunteers put their hands up to give their time, their resources, their boats, their use of their equipment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, to make this happen. Um, there was no funding for the project. The only funding that did come through um, very generously from the Waheke Marine Project and from the Kelly Tarleton's Trust was to cover the equipment needed to do so, i.e. the tape measures and the underwater notebooks. So all the individuals that took part volunteered absolutely independently. We, over the four weeks, as you may know, the weather wasn't fantastic. So we had quite a few challenges um, and we had 32 buddy pairs, uh, did 64 dives in total, which we were chuffed to bits with considering that weather window was not, well, not fantastic. So we actually covered almost all of the areas we were looking to. So at the moment, we're still processing the data. Um, so there is a report to come, which we'll then share with our partners within the project. Um, but some early interesting stuff is that there are some. So I thought, rather than talk in detail about any of the kind of early learnings while we're still processing it, it's a little bit too new um, and don't want to make any presumptions. I thought it would be a great chance to show you some slides of some of the locals. Um, so these are all cray that we have been found here along the coastline. Um, as you can see, there are some together in, in mating areas and within their dens, there are some independently. Um, and those of you who have eagle eyes might see there are some pack horse and some red as well. So there is a little bit of variety there too. And finally, just nice quick presentation for you all. So I just wanted to say thank you um, to everyone who has helped us. So massive thank you to all of you on the call here for listening. Thank you to Craig Thorburn, who was also the um, other half of the project who sadly couldn't make the call today. To all of the volunteers, um, super important that we thank the Wahiki Marine Project, that we thank Nati Pawa and also the Kelly Talton Marine and Wildlife Trust. Without all of that support from all of you, it simply couldn't happen. Um, thank you again for listening. Feel free to pop questions in the chat or flick us an email, and I'm going to pass back to Miranda and Fred. Kia ora, Adam. That was fantastic, and what a wonderful way to start, huh? Just the whole concept. Just imagine, simply imagine. I think all of us would be behind that big time, and we know that it's a complex space to be able to rewild colder, and um, we are going to make sure that the principles we talked about before, a Tiriti partnership, good knowledge, collaborative practice, all those things are going to be there every step of the way. So I um, want to just apologies we've had from uh, Fitu Marama and Te Taiti, really unfortunate, they got stuck with car trouble, um, but they, um, so the gorgeous Rangatahi 21-22 who came uh, to the Whanganui Atara with me this week, and they're going to give us a video which will pop up on the website for later. So uh, Grant Crawford has agreed to step in which is pretty impressive. So um, we'll move to Grant now, and he's going to talk to us about the communication space that uh, the Waikiki Marine Project's been doing over the last year. So over to you, Grant. Excellent, Grant. We can't quite hear you. We can see you. Can't hear you yet. We are on mute. Can you unmute him, maybe? Two. Yes, there we go. We got a... <laughs> Kia ora koutou. Um, I'm Grant. I'm a member of the um, communications team. Um, so communications play uh, a key role uh, in the project, and I don't think you can yet see my presentation. So stand by. should be visible now. Um, communications play a key role in helping reach um, protection and regeneration goals of the project. Um, and we welcome your input into their effectiveness. 
Through communication, uh, we engage with the community and our partners and we express the project's personality um, and also its tone. Uh, we facilitate the sharing of knowledge. We uncover innovation. Uh, we problem solve and we also allow people to connect beyond the sands of Te Motu, Te Araroa. And we're not getting this next slide. Here we go. Um, in our communications group, I'd just like to introduce um, Gerben Van Mel, uh, Sue Fitchett, Karis Templer, Mariana Berger, and Serena Woodall. Um, we've also had um, in this team, which is made up of a blend of experience, talent, and passion, also had recent contributions from Lucy Tukia, Carola Cullum, Linda Simpson, and Janine Clarkin. So thank you to, to those participants. Communications are an integral part of the project backbone. The team uh, meets every two weeks currently um, and has common voices and connections with the other project work streams. Um, we can just see the communication um, group um, together with the coordination, navigation, Ana Whenua, and, um, and our planning and funding. Um, as um, Miranda pointed out, we, we have a, a number of guiding principles which, which also fl flow through to our communications. Mana Whenua partnership, um, the collaborative practice, application of knowledge, um, and by that we have resources um, around legislation and three forms of science, Miranda also touched on. Um, the whole system focus, which is again our nine voices of mana whenua locals, fishers and boaties, conservationists, youth, land interests, marine business, scientists and agencies. We're also following the Waiheke Collective Charter, of course, which we are um, part of the Waiheke Collective along with Te Korowai and Waiheke. This is the digital home of the project, um, features the uh, lovely Mata Kupinga pattern design by Deja Manuel, uh, which is a, a fishnet, uh, symbolising the gathering of um, the people in this conversation, but also the gathering of sustenance and enterprise. We um, are using social channels, and here we have a, a couple of examples of our, um, on the left-hand side, our Instagram page our, and our YouTube channel. Um, and we can see Rob Morton, uh, who's, who's one of our contributors to the um, Conversations in Isolation series. Uh, we're also um, using, if, if, you're, if you're wondering about Facebook, we'll be using Waiheke Collective's um, Facebook page. Here we have some examples of the project's visibility. Um, we have the doc blog on the left-hand side, um, our, own, um, our own blog, Golf News, of course, um, our weekly community newsprint. Um, and we also support that with a bi-monthly e-newsletter. And of course, the webinar that we're, um, that we're hosting here today. We've recently um, decided to continue our popular graphic series, and here we have two examples. Um, these are set to continue through the transition phase thanks to, to the funding that we have from GIFT, um, and we have the latest uh, versions in production now. And, and these are aimed at informing, educating, delivering consistent messages um, in a positive way throughout the project. We've also added a, um, a supporter sticker um, and these, every presenter today will receive um, these, one of these at least, and these are also available to anyone who'd like to just email um, the team email address or or tap us on the shoulder when we see you in the community and um, we can give you one of these stickers to, to show you support for the project. Um, finally, um, we, we'd like to invite um, people on the call today to contribute to our resources. We're working to enhance the website particularly um, and we remain open to your contributions. Currently we have limited 
resources uh, while we're in transition. Um, and, to, and we'd like to gather more information in these two areas, um, Mātauranga Māori, Māori knowledge, um, citizen or otherwise known as community science. So if there's anyone uh, listening who would um, have experience in these areas and can assist, please make contact through um, our two coordinators. And that is all on communications. Thank you very much. Oh, kia ora Grant. That was an awesome presentation and thank you for letting us all know about how you're informing and educating the people and also how you're utilising social media to get the message out there. That's awesome. Got it, thank you. Um, kia ora anō tātou. Uh, next to me I have Hiri Aroha Skipper, one of my whanaunga from Hauraki and also from here on the island. Um, and she will be talking to us today about the Ngāti Pao Rāhui. So, kia ora e te whananga. A tēnā tātou, tuatahi mihi tēnei kia ora, koutou kia ora, Fred Nāna i tūwhira ka tātou nei, hui, hui, hui ngā i rongi tēpirangi nō reira he mihi tēnei kia tātou. Well, I've only been given five minutes, but that first part is, our, is my cultural obligation, so the time starts now. Um, so, uh, my presentation's on around the Waiheke Rahui and just giving a quick update to this forum about where we've come from and where we're currently at regarding the Rahui. So I will just figure out how to go move my slides. It's all right, Fred's got the source sussed for us. We can only hope anyway. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, so the first part of our rahui back in January was ko takoto te rahui. So here's just some images of the actual fantastic turnout from um, from the particularly the Waiheke local community, from Piritahi Marae, um, from agencies that came across to the island and other supporters of the rahui as well as it being um, laid down by Ngāti Power. So we um, went through a process um, around uh, getting to that point of laying the rahui, and we did that within two weeks from the first discussion to actually laying the rahui down. So that's just um, where we've come from. So as we laid the rahui down, the other process we took was to apply for 186A temporary closure with the Ministry of um, primary industry through the Minister of, of Oceans and Fisheries. So you would have seen this in the first presentation with Adam um, around the one nautical mile. Um, and so those submissions, um, so our application went in for this and it was open for approximately six weeks, a little bit longer too, because we had submissions coming in after the closing date. So we put the application in. And this is the results of the application. So the call for submissions was put out by the Ministry of Primary, um, by MPI, we got 248 submissions. Um, I was able to review all the submissions and from the review of the submissions, we received 229 support letters or um, communications of support. So that's approximately 93% um, support. And we did, I also did, uh, reviewed those that opposed. So that was important to see why they opposed. Some was because there wasn't enough scientific evidence but um, we, the evidence was already out there. It was really coming from the cultural context in terms of our application. So <clears throat> from there, the, the, um, we had a hui with MPI because I've been asking when are the, is the decision going to be made. So um, there's a couple of things we've had to, to review um, around the Rahui area because the Rahui covers um, some of the other tribal boundary areas. So we're happy for some variation of that because it's not the intention to cross over to other iwi and um, with our rahui. So we're currently going through the mapping in terms of the north, um, parts of that um, one nautical mile. Uh, one of the biggest issues was um, around the rahui compliance. So should um, anyone be in breach, we want to ensure that MPI actually have the staff and the team on the ground to enforce that, so it's not just totally reliant on the um, local community. And so that's been um, quite, quite um, where we're at at the moment is meeting with the compliance team, so we're clear on what that is. 
So as a result, the decision is still pending. And um, we've met with uh, the minister. He, he knows how important it is for us. But, you know, this is just a process. So as far as Ngāti Pao is concerned, kua takoto te rāhui, so I'm focusing on the rāhui. And the application is just part of that process to, for enforcement to ensure that it has a bit of mana behind it as well. So part of our mahi um, leading forward around the rāhui is doing rangatahi and training, and they become our cultural marine monitors. So this is this um, one of the first, this, this actually was a, a wānanga held um, down at Enclosure Bay here on Waiheke, and thanks to the uh, Waiheke dive shop who um, came in and also took our rangatahi and our, and our young ones into the water. So we need to train them because that's the future moving forward. Um, rather than hiring in scientists to come and do the work, then go away and wait till we've got more money to pay them. We want to build the capacity and the knowledge base amongst our young our youth. Um, the other part I've been focusing on around the Rahvi is bringing in Māori, um, Mātauranga Māori experts. So we have um, Kaupapa Māori methodology, we'll, you know, bringing in the Mātanga Putaiao, around the Mōana, around the... Um, the ahua um, rangi, huarere. So these are all around bringing in um, scientists that specialise in the moana, um, that specialise in, because we're holistic, so it specialises in climate, around weather, around the environment, around the lunar calendar. So it's bringing in all the elements of mātauranga into the room. So we've got a, a forum we're pulling, we've pulled together, actually. Um, as part of that kaupapa, we have a kaumātua advisory forum, so we'll be guided by our kaumātua of Ngāti Pāwa, Fano, Hapu and Iwi, and they hold the localised knowledge um, for this kaupapa, and it's about mātauranga to recalibrate our cultural practices. So um, three things we've identified is around cultural sustainable practices and building capacity and capability within our people to restore a healthy moana. So regardless of the application, there's a lot of mahi that's already been done. We've actually already had our marine scientists come in to um, do site visits and um, already talking with our rangatahi about moving forward for this kaupapa. Uh, so in regards, um, you know, even for this kaupapa, I've been invited to present about the round that are we, um, so we've done presentations to the Hauraki Golf Forum, the Ngāti Pāwa uh, Wānanga on here on Waiheke to keep everyone up to date and here today is the showcase. Um, I've also been invited to be a keynote speaker at a New Zealand Marine Science Society conference being held in Tauranga um, and also to be a keynote speaker at the Ocean Summit which is an international um, conference that's going to be go right around the world and um, they've also invited Ngāti Pāwa to be the first Indigenous host of this conference it's going to be held in Auckland. So yeah that's a quick um, speed presentation just to show you in terms of where we're at and how we've progressed. Kia ora. <laughs> Pretty um, neat to be able to do this in person so thank yeah. you very much. There was one question because um, we're not able to do online with you um, we'll just give you one question. Yep. This will be the only one that happens like this. The question is, are Ngāti Pāwa comfortable with the way that the Waiheke Marine Project has made the project a collaborative community project? Is there any way we can do better with the relationship with Ngāti Pāwa going forward? That was very fast. <laughs> so, so can you repeat that uh, collaboration? So, with... Are Ngāti Pāwa comfortable with the way the Waiheke Marine Project has made it a collaborative Space. Yes, I, I just think that um, at the end of the day, you need to have all the voices in the room. So we're talking about having, the, you know, all the system in the room, the voices need to be there too. And from a cultural context, it's really important for Ngāti Pāwa to be a part of that. And we totally support this kaupapa moving forward. Thank you very much, Hedy Aroha. It was amazing. It's certainly, um, I for one, and I know a lot of people, I feel quite comfortable saying I speak for a lot of people, that the sheer excitement of this, the space around an entire island, you know, mm. for Rahui, is, it's, it's showing us how we need to be going. We need to be thinking bigger, and we need yeah. to be brave, and we just need to get on with it. Yeah, so, and that's cool. us, action. Tell you very much. Okay, so now we're moving in uh, to uh, WWF. So I can ask you this. You can. She's turning off her mic here. <laughs> Fred will come back in. Um, it's very exciting being able to do this. Um, so now I'd like to invite uh, WWF and hashtags I've given to their work: um, uh, Amplify and Support, Platform, Ocean Action, and Global Network. So I'll hand on to Lucy. 
Iriaka and Esther. Kia ora, mauri ora ki te rangi, he mauri ora ki te whenua, he mauri ora ki te moana, uh, ngā te paua ki wai heke te nga koutou, o tira ki ngā mana ko hono mai ki tēnei huia, hui topa, te nga koutou. Uh, te nga koe Fred, maui whakatufira, tika i tō tātou hui, te nga koe, o tira rā ki tō hua haere, kia Miranda, te nga kōrua e whakahaere nei tēnei o ngā hui. Uh, he uri a hau no puhi, puhi ari ki moana, no paua, uh, he kaimahi a hau, no WWF, uh, kei otaki a haue noho ana, uh, ko iriaka e piha Ferris tōku ingoa. Tēnā koutou katoa. Kei a koe, Lucy. Kia ora, iriaka. Uh, tēnā koutou. Nō no engarangi, areana, kotirana, me wera oku, Tupuna, e noho ana ahau ki Pukerua, e WWF ahau e mahiana, ko ahau te Ocean Challenge Manager, ko Lucy Jacob toko ingoa, tēnā koto katoa. Kia ora koto katoa, no hāmoa me inga rangi o kutupuna, e noho ana ahau ki te whanganui ātara, Kei WWF aho e mahiana ko o te Oceans Communications Manager. Ko Esther Lees toku ingoa te nā tātou e hui hui mai nei. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, we are WWF New Zealand. Thank you for the privilege of having us presented this, this hui today. Um, our mission is to protect Aotearoa's precious native species and ecosystems and to build a future where all people thrive in harmony with nature. Um, WWF have been working in Aotearoa for over 45 years. We carry out a range of activities, including policy, advocacy, and supporting community groups. Um, over 400 different community groups actually since 2000 through um, our community conservation fund. We have a strong focus on protecting and regenerating our marine environment. Um, WWF New Zealand is genuinely committed to upholding Te Tiriti o Waitangi, seeking direction to ensure our actions fulfill this commitment. Um, kia ora everybody. So I was lucky enough to be at the Future Search Hui last year. Um, and so we're just going to give you a quick overview of some of the activities that um, we have led uh, and been part of since then. So um, we did support Ngāti Kuri in the far north um, with the Marae Moana Kaitiaki survey. This is uh, requested by them and led by them and designed to help them understand visitor numbers, behaviours and values for people um, coming into their rohe in the summer months. Um, and that's part of their long term vision to restore their whenua and their moana. Uh, also, last, just last week, um, we held the Taitorua workshops on Monday and Tuesday. So one of those was on looking at uh, marine protection in a changing climate, and the other was on the concept of a sustainable blue economy. It was fantastic to have Te Ataiti and Fetu Marama from Ngāti Paua with us, and also Miranda, and we really hope um, that they're able to transfer some of those learnings and networks to the work in Waiheke. Um, some other activities are earlier this year, we delivered as part of a coalition, a petition to our leaders um, to try and get trawling stopped on sea mounts and other similar features. And um, we've also been developing a relationship with Ngāti Toa, our local iwi, and we'll be carrying out some stream planting with them in August in Porirua. Uh, we've confirmed funding for 22 groups through our Community Conservation and Environmental Education Fund. And some of those are in the Tikapa Moana area. We're also developing a first voices project, and this is a collaboration between Australia, Aotearoa, the Solomons and Vanuatu, and it's looking specifically at, um, I guess, uh, the climate adaptation work that's been led by Indigenous communities and giving more of a platform to those voices. Um, there's also the Whale Tail Project, which some of you may have heard of. This is a sculpture trail that will be in Tamaki Makoto in January. And I believe there is a tail on Waiheke being painted and potentially that tail or another tail will be stationed on Waiheke. Sorry, bringing more visitors as part of the Whale Tail Sculpture Trail. And finally, last but not least, is the Ocean Challenge. And that's what we want to talk to you more about now. 
So the goal of um, this new concept is to restore and protect the Moana by amplifying the voices and supporting the action of iwi, hapu and coastal communities throughout Aotearoa. Um, it's really a concept still in development, but it's been inspired by the action of communities such as Ngāti Power and the Waiheke Marine Project, because you're doing such awesome work and we really want to figure out how we can help support that and scale that out. So you can see here on the screen a, a conceptual kind of graphic of how we see this working with communities very much at the heart or the centre of this. Um, and the aim is to provide resources and support directly to iwi, hapu and coastal communities um, so that you can lead your own, as you already are doing, um, lead your own marine protection and restoration work. So resources could be provided directly um, as requested or they could take the form of co-developed projects. Some examples could be, um, you know, funding for community wānanga or for restoration activities, or potentially for the development of tools that will make it easier for you to carry out um, the work that, that you want to do. One of our aspirations is that in time policy will be enhanced to better support the needs of iwi, hapu and coastal communities. And so we'll really um, work on policy advocacy as part of the Ocean Challenge. I'll just hand over to Esther now to talk more about the amplifying the voices part of this. Kia ora Lucy. Um, yeah, as Lucy said, our, our aim with this project, the Ocean Challenge, is to amplify voices and action through storytelling, essentially. Um, it's absolutely vital that our decision makers hear the voices, aspirations and actions of uh, iwi, hapu and coastal communities. Um, we also see an opportunity to share learnings from this project and scale up the successes. Um, in relation to the Waiheke Marine Project's nine common ground commitments, we see this project, the Ocean Challenge, as having the potential to relate to any of them, um, but most closely to te tiriti, Māori, learning, protection tools, um, and eventually effective legislation. Kia ora tato. Um, here you will see the kaupapa that WWF have identified that will be the foundational values to set a strong foundation um, to set this project upon. Uh, and those are mana, pono, uh, sorry, manakitanga, pono, kaitakitanga, afinatanga, and pukingatanga. Thanks, Eriaka. I'd just like to add that WWF, you know, we are on a journey to deepen our understanding of Kapapa Māori and to guide our work alongside of and in support of um, Māori in, in Aotearoa. We are fully committed, as Esther said, to upholding Titiriti or Waitangi. So with that in mind, our intention for the Ocean Challenge is for it to be guided by the priorities of Māori as kaitiaki and therefore to take shape depending on the aspirations of iwi and hapu alongside coastal communities. Um, so just leading straight on to the next and final slide, um, where to from here, we would love to get feedback on the Ocean Challenge concept, and we do welcome deeper engagement around what those needs and aspirations are, and just hearing some of the previous presentations was really helpful with that, actually. Um, there is an opportunity to request support, whether it's financial, whether it's technical. Um, so, for example, how can we support with helping um, you achieve the nine common ground commitments. We'd love to have that conversation. There's also an opportunity for collaboration on the overall concept and how this is developed so that it can be really effective in achieving the goals. So I'm not sure how we're doing for timing, but do feel free to get in touch <laughs> with any of us um, and we can answer any questions, obviously, if there's time. Kia ora. <laughs> Kia ora tato. Atua tahi mokori anō ngā mahi ki a koutou mō koutou mahi um, i tēnei wāhanga. Um, yeah, no reira tēnā koutou, kia koutou. Uh, Lucy Rato ko... Iriaka. Iriaka ko Esther Hoki. Kia Next we have um, Kristen Busher, who's going to be talking to us about Marine Education Plus and youth dri driving change through action. So, kia ora, Kristen. Kia ora, everyone. Okay, I just got back from planting today, so I'm a bit muddy. Um, okay, how do I share my screen with you? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Oh. Sorry. Okay, kia ora. <laughs> 
so um, ko Waitakere te maunga ko Oratea te awa. Uh, so I grew up out West Auckland, uh, no Waiheke ho. I moved to Waiheke uh, in the year 2000. Um, uh, ko Kristen Busher toko ingoa. Uh, my name's Kristen and uh, I work for the Waiheke Resources Trust. Uh, so I'm the partnerships manager and also the project lead for the Marine Education Initiative. So what is that? Uh, so yes, so it's managed by the Waiheke Resources Trust. Um, it's a local board funded project and it's done in partnership with sustainable schools. Um, and we also work with some amazing uh, local contractors, including Waiheke Dive and Snorkel. And this year we were really um, lucky to be working with Bianca from Modi or Timawana. Uh, so the idea is to take um, students through a program, a year long program um, that helps them connect with their local marine environment find out what issues um, it is facing and then empower them by connecting them with local experts and experts from afar and giving them the knowledge to take action. Um, and then at the end of year, we celebrate. So this is the learning action cycle that we use. So in term one, uh, we, we let them explore and, and find out and love all about um, their local marine environment. So we take them uh, down to um, a bay near them, mostly in Closure Bay, but this year we've also been working in Ofunaki and Island Bay, um, and they go snorkeling. We do uh, native bush um, exploration and rocky shore exploration with the idea that we do a total bio blitz and find out all the different types of species that they're living in, in that area. In term two, we, we do a similar uh, experiential day where we go and look at all the issues um, that that area might be facing. So instead of looking at native tree species, we might look at weeds and um, we might do water monitoring to see water quality, et cetera. Um, and then based on all the information that the students have got, they uh, go away and come up with amazing actions uh, to do. And then in term three, we celebrate. So far, um, so we're working with four schools on Waiheke and we've had over 200, uh, 600 students <laughs> be involved. Um, and there's just been so much action that's come out of it. It's a, it's a really amazing project. We've done June planting. We've had Waiheke primary right, Rahui submissions. We're doing fresh water monitoring, beach litter audits. Um, there was an amazing sustainable fishing competition. Uh, we've had uh, litter traps and drains, all sorts of things. And these are all um, initiatives that the students, they're all student driven. So just uh, this year, since Future Search, I thought I'd give you an update kind of what we've been doing from now. So last year, Fossil Bay um, decided to adopt Ofunaki Bay as their area of focus, and they were doing weekly be beach cleans. Um, from that, we ended up uh, taking them out snorkeling out Island Bay, which a lot of the students and all the teachers had never been to before, which was quite exciting. Um, so they learned all about that area, and then now they're going to be moving into doing um, planting and different things down there. To Hudahi, so they were at Enclosure Bay at the beginning. They've now um, adopted Surfdale Beach or Hudahu Bay, and they've connected them with sustainable coastlines and are running through their LEIP program um, where they are doing beach litter audits and then doing things like planting uh, native seedlings and coffee cups and then going to plant them in the wetland at Hooks Lane. Waiheke Primary, they've decided to uh, look after Tawai Pereira catchment. So that's the catchment and the waterway that runs um, past their school there, past the skate park and out into uh, Putiki Bay. Um, we had an amazing time with them there a couple of weeks ago with Karis, she was a facilitator with me. Um, they did water testing. We uh, looked at how once was a wetland ended up being a landfill and then a skate park and a transfer station and what the impacts of that has had on the waterway. Um, and then from there, they do these amazing things, <laughs> which I get very excited about when the teachers send me. So this is a mind map that the students and the teachers did together after our experiential day. Um, and they've, they're asking questions. So uh, what are a few? Um, you know, uh, macroinvertebrates, are they endangered? If they go extinct, will they be affected? Sea life, Rahui, how does the Tawai Pereira stream affect sea life? All these different questions that these students are asking, they will then go out and find the answers to. Um, that will inform them with their action projects. What are our needs for the project? So uh, we really love connecting in with uh, local experts. 
Um, so, and scientists and, um, and mana whenua, we, uh, our need for the project next year is to connect in with mana whenua, piritahi marae moa. Um, we're hoping to be working with Pirinako so the students can help us on that journey. Um, but yeah, anyone out there in the marine project world that wants to get involved with our tamariki on Wahiki, um, we would love you to connect in and come out with us on experiential day. Um, and lastly, I just have to take my WRT hat off um, and I'm going to put my Kristen hat on. And I just, uh, because I'm speaking about marine education and we're talking about the marine environment, I just have to acknowledge um, yeah, what's happening for our community right now with regards to Putuki Bay and the development of the marina. Um, and I just thought I'd leave you with one of the questions that the students actually asked at Waiheke Primary. This is their um, inquiry question. Sorry. Uh, so is the Kennedy Point Marina going to have a positive or negative effect on Waiheke and what can we do to help? Kia ora. In our clear, Kristen, that was absolutely beautiful. And thank you for, thank you for bringing your heart in um, at the end and all the way through. And I think that presentation was the most amazing um, reminder to us of the deep complexity of the space we're all in and that it isn't linear at all. And you know, I did, I'm about to be a bit rude myself, too often the linear, we put in a plan, we agree with it and then just trot it out. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, um, and, and your comment to what's happening in, in Putiki Bay, and, uh, you know, the other big process of sea change, you know, this is so eight years of sea change, what's it been almost five years now of Putiki Bay, of, of, mm -hmm. of the raru raru going on there. Um, these, you have to have tenacity, right, to be able to see it through and um, for us all to keep bringing our hearts and our persistence to this work. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Um, so now I'd love to, it's a um, great privilege and pleasure to um, introduce our next speaker and our last speaker for this part of the webinar. Remembering everybody, this is the don't leave, come back again at two o'clock. Um, but I'm really looking forward to introduce Bianca Ransom. Um, Bianca, I, I took the um, cheekiness and gave a few hashtags for this. Hashtag urgent action, hashtag voice of Māori, hashtag Aotearoa network. So over to you. Oh, can you see my screen? Oh, yep, we can. Oh, you can. Okay, kapai. Uh, kia ora hui hui mai tātou, um, ko mā tātoa te waka, ko taratara te maunga, ko Ngāti Kahuki Whangaroa te hapu, uh, ko Bianca Toku Ingoa. Um, thanks, Miranda. Um, they sound like pretty good hashtags. Um, and thank you to Fred for opening our space this morning. Um, ngā mahi nui ki a kōrua, um, ki a koutou hoki, uh, i tāi mai i te ahiahi nei ki te whakarongo uh, ki ngā kaupapa, um, ngā kaupapa um, nui ki a, ki a mātou e pāna ki te, te um, tiakina tō tātou moana um, ki te pikiti ora o te moana hoki. Um, mā reira tēnā tātou katoa. Um, I just wanted to um, start off with um, this beautiful um, photo of Waiheke, which kind of leads on from where Kristen has um, finished. And so this is for those that are on Waiheke or know them all too well, this is um, Putiki Bay. Um, and obviously a space that has got a lot going on at the moment in regard to, um, to the Modi, not only of this bay, but of Tikapa Moana, Te Moana Nui Atoi, and Te Moana Nui Akiwa, um, as it is the Moana that binds us. Um, in terms of Modi or Te Moana, I just thought I'd start with a bit of a all about who we are. So we are that uh, came together out on Aotea in December last year for a wānanga at Kawa Marae. And so we had Māori from across Aotearoa that are uh, actively working within um, the Moana space um, in their own in their own rohe and in their own way. And there was, I believe, over 70 of us that came together uh, for that wānanga. And that was for three days in total. And at the end of that, um, it was uh, agreed that um, that we would move forward um, as Modi or Te Moana. Um, so what do we do? Um, so collectively, um, we work together. So uh, we are here, Whakamininga Mahi Ngātahi, 
ki te piki te ora, ki a ria kina, ki a hikitia, te mauri o te moana. So we are a collective and united group working together to amplify and activate uh, actions for a healthy and thriving moana. Um, the three main the three main kaupapa that we focus on are extraction. Um, so when we're talking about extraction, extraction is commercial and recreational fishing, obviously. Um, extraction is also to do with uh, oil, minerals, um, sand. Extraction is also dredging. Um, then we have pollution. So that can be from microplastics to sedimentation um, to the subsequent dumping of that dredging. Um, and then one of the one of the uh, other ones is obviously governance, and so governance is a really key one for us and a really important one for us, uh, particularly because we are uh, um, by Maori for Maori kaupapa um, at at the heart of it. And in saying that, we do have some really strong um, allies and alliances outside of that that uh, that are really supportive of the mahi that we are doing. So in terms of governance, like what we believe is that under the current um, uh, under the current extractive economy, which is really based on consumerism and a colonial mindset, the uh, the way of thinking around what are deemed as resources is really about extracting, burning, and then dumping. And the way that that happens is that there'll be some companies at the top and then there's a lot of people that are working for not so much money in order to enable all of this to happen while lots of people make lots of money. Um, and that the purpose of it is to enclose uh, the wealth and the power among the few. And the reason for that is for the government, uh, for the gov government's finance. Whereas if we look over to what our tūfuna secured for us under Te Tiriti, it's a very, very different relationship that we have. So our relationship to Te Ao to the Taiao, is through Whakapapa, and because of that Whakapapa connection, that relationship is tapu. And so the way that, um, and so the way that we work within that space and recognise that is uh, recognising it as that as Te Ao and as no water. So there is, it's about the Modi and the interconnectedness of all of the multitudes and layers of life within that. The way that we work, um, though, work that is through cooperation. So we work together and the putake or the, the, the reason for that is for uh, the Modi of the whenua, the Modi of the tangata and the, and, and, um, and the Modi of the moana. And so the way that that happens is the mahi ngātaki, which is a deep democracy. So we believe that in terms of te ao Māori and tikanga and what was secured for us, that is our way to be able to, and it's proven through Indigenous knowledge um, systems that have been passed down to us through the generations, that this is, um, this is the way for us to be able to really understand um, and interact with our, um, with our moana um, in a way that is going to maintain um, you know, the sustain, sustaining life force that we need to actually continue our existence as humans. So in terms of on Waiheke, what have we been doing since Future Search? Um, we've had some amazing speakers come in. I'd just like to mihi out to um, Te Atarangi, who I know is also on this call, who came through to Piritahi and spoke about the amazing mahi that he's been doing out of Motiti with his whanau. We have Ramari Stewart, who is a tohunga mā tauranga, who came up here and went into Wānanga with us for five weeks. And while she was here, had a in Western science, had the first ever whale named after a wahine in the world. And that was an indigenous wahine, and that was Whaia Ramari. Um, and then we also managed to get um, the band LAB on as one of our sponsors, which was super exciting. I'm not sure of my time, so I'm just going to take one more minute. Um, I guess just in terms of uh, urgent things that are happening on Waiheke, obviously there is a lot going down at Putiki Bay. And after the Wananga with Fire, uh, Ramari, and she was brought to the Motu um, and stayed with us in Wananga for, 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 for an intensive and, and, and decent amount of time. Uh, we have started our monitoring program down at Putiki and a lot of people, there's a lot of focus around the korora, but for us it's about understanding all of the life within that bay and the relationships that we are observing and recording. So uh, first of all, there was agreed to set 
tikanga for the breakwater so that we could minimize our threats as not only Modi or Timwana, but everyone else who was going into that space. Um, and so that's there's a sign at the entrance of the breakwater there that has that on there. We have up to usually between three to seven kaitaki every single morning sitting around Putiki Bay um, under the guidance of Whairamari, who is our supervisor. And so there are just so many um, relationships and, and so much life within that bay and that is dependent on that bay and that will be directly impacted um, through the development of a marina, which is gonna take two years. The kororā are, are at immediate threat. Um, the, the penguin plan that is being put forward from the developer is not considered as best practice from our tohunga as well as the leading Western science expert in the country, John Cochrane. Um, so it's it's a really sad and um, and situation that's going on down there right now. But uh, as people who are here on the Motu, we are able to to get involved in this kind of a way to document, and we believe that we have no nobody has done a complete study on um, the Kororā, let alone the life within that bay. And so um, so we are doing that Matauranga um, being led. Um, in terms of Matauranga Māori. Uh, just in terms of, I've got a little video, it's 15 seconds, so I'm almost done. Um, and I just wanted to show you like, Kororā are so amazing. They are just like the most incredible, intelligent, highly resilient um, manu. And they're also our indicator species for Pūtiki. Um, this is just some footage from the 9th of June. So we're running, we're completely doing this voluntarily. We're um, being sponsored um, trail camps from Sea Shepherd and the community and all different places. Um, but this is just a 15 minute clip of, um, of some of their 15, behaviors. I hope it's not 15 and minutes. So, yeah, but, and the, <laughs> because we're, no, it's not 15 minutes. And, but they'll pop up right at our feet, you know, this, we're so silent and so still that we're really getting a true understanding of their behaviors. So I hope that kind of fills you in on some of the mahi that we've been up to. Um, and thank you very much for the opportunity to come and speak. And I'm going to be logging off now to go to the community hui um, to, to talk more about what's happening at Pūtiki. Uh, Kia ora. Just a couple of things I wanted to touch on on your presentation. Um, the big thing that stood out for me was that you're not focusing on just one species, you're monitoring all marine life in Putsiki Bay, which is an awesome place to start, I think. So, uh, yeah. So kia ora. And uh, kia ora koutou to all the presenters uh, for this first um, of the three webinars. Absolutely stunning, and I hope people are getting a, an insight um, into how exciting it is. This is these 18 presentations are the tip of an iceberg of care, of deep, deep marine care that people feel. Um, you know, we are the ocean. The ocean is us, and um, the only way we can show that care is by taking action. Um, and so, the aim of this webinar is to hold a mirror up to ourselves and see what's going on, that we can hang on to hope when things seem so dire and so torturous. Um, so I encourage you to uh, come back on at two o'clock and really look forward to seeing you all then. Namahe. Kia ora.